Bex and Vax only care about themselves. Oh. Grog just wants to murder everyone. Yeah, pretty much. Percy barely wants to be seen with us in public. When you've lost everyone that's close to you, you end up not only dealing with survivor's guilt, a lot of people then become defensive. They don't want to get close to others. You've already lost everyone. You can understand how that would be an even greater cost for Percy. A lot of his abrasive, sarcastic nature, why he isn't really open, is his own defense mechanism. He doesn't let people close to him and doesn't get close to others, then he won't get hurt again. And often when people are prickly or sarcastic or harsh, it's just because they've cut out that part of them that feels because they've been through so much pain and torment. And Percy too. <laughs> You see how Percy's hair went white from all of the stress? We hear a lot of tales of people's hair that turns white overnight because of traumatic experiences. And that isn't exactly the case. No, your hair doesn't actually go white overnight because of stress. But stress actually can damage those stem cells that produce melanin, the thing that creates color. And we do know that stress damages those cells. And because of that, your hair can grow in white where it wasn't before. And that's the way that stress is damaging, but not intense stress or panic attacks, more of that generalized stress, if you're continually stressed. Because moments of stress are not actually bad for us. It's like going over a roller coaster ride or watching a scary movie. Continual stress, generalized anxiety, where you can never come down from it, our body doesn't heal. Our body only heals in times of happiness or relaxation. And so if you're always saying danger, our body is always in defense mode. And because of that, in times of stress, our body doesn't decide to heal. We're ready for battle because that will keep us alive. And we often go through nightmares. The main thing that you want to look at at nightmares is more the feeling that you feel during them. Now, sometimes what you go through is significant, what you see in the nightmare, but the emotions that you go through is even more significant. And for Percy, you can see that it's powerlessness, pain, anger, that feeling that he's not in control, the torment of reliving something that he wished had a different ending. And I think that the main one for him through all of it was powerlessness, that he couldn't do anything to fix it. Must do. I'm simply suggesting you could all benefit from some well-practiced restraint. Emotions aren't meant to be bottled up. Maybe you should cut loose once in a while. For Percy, though, that's what he's doing all the time, always restraining himself. So this is a little bit of projection. He's asking everyone else to do what he's always doing. Why? Because he's filled with pain and anger. And so we never really see the true Percy. He always is containing himself because if he really let loose, we'd see the demons that's lurking inside of him. All of that pain and anguish and anger from all of the trauma that he's gone through. He sees everyone being so unrestrained and free and that's probably really frustrating for him because he works so hard at being able to keep himself in this well manicured image. And I think that a little bit of that is his own anguish and jealousy of other people being able to be so free with their emotions where he can't because if he truly let loose I think that he's scared of what might come out. We're constantly trying to keep the parts of ourselves that may become too much on the inside. Bottling them up doesn't actually help them heal. The only way through healing is actually going back to those dark places and dealing with them in whichever way works for you. The sad reality is that the Girolos abdicated and after their children raided the treasury, they abandoned their people to rot. Bias! You can't really blame Percy. He's been going through this situation in his head continuously and to have not only his parents' good name be smirched, but also he himself, his own character, that he was doing something that was against his own parents, that was just too much for him. For many of us, it would be really hard to sit across from someone that has hurt us so deeply. And Percy already, you can tell that he's kind of this time bomb. He always seems like he's 
just barely on that edge of control. And this, no doubt, was way too much for him. When we've been trying to contain ourselves, everything comes out with it. Stop them! Come visit us sometime, Percival. No! Pad them! And you let them slip away! <sighs> Because Percy's been trying to keep himself restrained when he sees his chance and vengeance that just slips out of his fingers, all of that anger and rage, we often yell at someone else instead of blaming ourselves because that would hurt too much and already he already feels too overwhelmed with his own guilt and pain. And so because of that, he blames the nearest other people, his teammates. We often then blame those that are closest to us, those that we care about for the mistakes mistakes, the flaws that we did. And so you often want to be careful with blaming others when something bad happens. Even that moment of pausing might help you be able to regain some control of your anger. Answer me. I'm, I'm only a servant. They, they don't tell me anything. Now your soul is forfeit. And now we can see the darkness that lurks within him. This is what he's been containing all of this time. And that's the thing with revenge, is that it eats you from the inside. It's this darkness that even when you get what you want, it doesn't feel as good because what he really wants, he can't actually get back. No revenge will actually make him feel better. That plague doctor motif perfectly embodies the demon that's really within himself. All of that pain and anguish. And it's the opposite of how powerless he felt. When we've gone through something so traumatic and we haven't been able to help or save those because we weren't strong enough, we often overcompensate because we really want to make sure that this can never happen happen again. And that scenario will run over and over in our head, but with a different outcome. The creation of the pepper box begins five years ago. With my family murdered, I had no way of striking back. I fled. And a lot of people do that when they've gone through trauma or pain or being bullied or loss. That feeling of powerlessness, it's so horrible that we often recreate ourselves in a way that we try to make sure that that can never happen to us again. But not only just him, he made sure that he had the mechanisms to be able to write this, to make sure that no one would be able to make him feel this powerless ever again. Unrelenting visions of my family's end, the hatred inside me grew. Vengeance burning hotter than black powder, nearly consuming me. The more that you play something in your brain, the stronger those emotions become. And so with him replaying in his brain trauma and grief and anger, it becomes much stronger because neurons that fire together wire together. And emotions are like any other skill. You want to get better at playing piano, practice playing piano. You want to get better at being angry, practice being angry. It's really interesting that every time he gets that vengeance, you see all of that anger and pain and trauma exude out from him. The same thing that comes from the black powder of the gun, it actually comes out of him. It's become who he is, grief or sadness or anxiety. It can become our identity and then we don't actually want to lose it because who are we when we no longer have the thing that is ours. Even though it's traumatic and horrible, in a strange way, some people can actually feel comforted by this. And this is not for him being dramatic, it's him being protected. If he's just angry and wants revenge all the time, then he doesn't have to worry about being loving and empathic and getting close to people. It's actually a very effective defense mechanism. But in the end, it's maladaptive because we need people, we need love. It stops him from being able to feel, which yeah, keeps him safe, but also keeps him away from getting something that might actually allow him to have peace. A spawn of science that would bring me the revenge I so desperately sought. I dreamt of this. Percy ended up giving himself a task to keep his mind off of the pain, which can be healthy, but his task was a task of revenge. And 
in the end, that's like the poison that we drink and hope that someone else dies. He's the one that exudes this black powder. It's become who he is. No amount of revenge is actually going to give him back what he hopes for. So let me know, did I miss your favorite Percy scene? If I did, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to support me, you can check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Georgia Dow. If you like this video, please hit subscribe.